Ahoy, crafty friend! It's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press. Today, I'm going to show you how I made this adorable pop-up pirate ship. Isn't it fun? I think it would be a great birthday card for kids of all ages. It's based on the scallop box card pop-up die set from Lawn Fawn. I had to do a little bit of die cut surgery to turn it into a pirate ship, but I think it turned out pretty great. It features digi stamps from Heartcraft Paper, this cute little bunny pirate, and then this brand new little fairy. She's pretty. Are you ready to see how I made it? <laughs> I started by printing out my images on a white cardstock, and then I'm going to color them in. If you aren't interested in watching me color, go ahead and skip to about 2 minutes and 8 seconds. You're going to want to see what I do um, with the little pirate flags. I use some pretty basic coloring here. For my bunny, I decided I wanted to color him in the same colors as our, m the bunny that we have at home. Her name is Remington Steal Your Heart. She's a sweet little bun. Um, and I thought this pirate would be cute if he was colored just like her. I used some browns and some reds uh, just to give the fur a lot of color and texture. I also thought a, a striped shirt would be fun and kind of piratey. After I get him all colored in, I'm going to work on the fairy. I thought she'd be kind of cute if I colored her to look sort of like Tinkerbell. Greens and blonde hair. I know my bunny isn't Captain Hook, but it kind of seemed to go together. For my pirate flags, I'm actually going to end up with one pirate flag, but I'm coloring two so that I can put them back to back. I'm starting with a C9, and then I'll bring in a little bit of C10, and then black on the outer edges, and I give it two coats. That gives me uh, nice coverage. When they're all colored, I'm going to cut the, the pirate and the fairy out with my scan and cut, and you'll see that it, actually, it accidentally mangled one of her antennae, but it's okay since I was going with a Tinkerbell theme. Cutting one off was no big deal, or cutting them both off actually is no big deal. And while I still had the uh, scanned images in the scan and cut, I cut out a second pair from white cardstock. Because of the backs of the Copic colored images are kind of ugly, I thought it'd be better to, to add a second layer behind them. And then I'll, of course, need to snip off the antenna from the second layer here, too. Then I'm going to go around the edges of the colored images with a black sharpie. This just outlines them and defines them, makes them look better. And I use a gray marker to fill in any negative space. For my pirate flags, I'm going to cut out uh, two of the smaller scallop uh, box card rectangles. Um, well, they're, they're frames in the scallop card set. I'll cut both of these flags out so that they end up being the same size. And then I'll sandwich them together back to back and I'll treat them as one so that I can cut waves out with the stitched hillside borders. And I'm just going to play with them until I find where I want the edges to be cut. After I cut out the side, I'm going to go ahead and cut out the top. This is a flag, not a sail, so only the left edge would be secured to the mast. So I'm going to have the top and the bottom wave as well. Thank you. 
after I get this cut out, I decided that it was the the skull was a little too far from center, so I trimmed it down a little bit with that rectangle die again. And then for my ship, I made a template from some cheap cardstock and repositionable adhesive just so I could play around till I got something that I liked. Then I can start cutting out the pieces with my good paper. I cut six masts with a straight slide on over die. And then I'm going to use this little die to cut four bow sprits. For my portholes, I'm going to punch a quarter inch circle. And then I'm going to use a slightly larger circle die to cut around it. It's basically making a, a hole reinforcement. And I'm actually going to do that six times, so I'll have six portholes. Then I'm going to cut out two scallop box frames. I'll cut three center struts. For my sails, I'm going to cut out two different size stitched rectangles. And then I'm going to use the stitch till side dies again to cut the sides. For my red flag, I cut down another stitched rectangle. And I ended up overlapping them so that it's just three sides. To get the curve in my deck, I'm going to use a large circle die to cut a dip into the smaller sides of my box frame. And I'm making sure to fold the larger flaps out of the way first. Once I get it cut for the first side, I'll go ahead and repeat it on the second side. And I missed a little spot, so I'll trim that away. So for the stern of my boat, or actually the back, I'm going to use a circle die again. And I'm going to line it up over the big flap. But I'm going to put my top plate only up to the fold line. So this will give me a partial die cut. I'm only going to cut half of that circle. Now for the, the bow, I'm going to use this curved die. This is the die in that scallop set that's supposed to be the banner string. But it, it has a nice curve. So I'm going to cut half of the, the front of the, the bow and then I'll reposition it and cut the other half. You could substitute a heart die here if you wanted and just cut the bottom portion of it. Then I'm going to darken up my portholes and my bowsprit pieces, and I'll shade that red flag. I used some antique linen distress oxide on the sails to make them look like sun bleach canvas. Then I'm going to use my bone folder, and I'm going to fold all my score lines and reinforce the, the fold so they're nice and flat. Then I've got some strong double stick tape and I'm going to apply it to all of the tabs. I like this stuff. It Once it's down, it's down and it stays forever. Then I'll glue my mast layers together. The mast needs to be pretty strong, so I've actually got three layers for each one. And I'm going to glue two together, and then I'll sandwich that um, around a strut and put the back layer on. And I'm using a right angle to make sure um, each mast sticks up straight. And you'll notice when I'm lining up my second mast, it sticks up a little higher than the first one. So that mast is a little taller. Then I'll figure out my sail placement and the flags. And 
and I'm going to glue them in place with my PVA glue. It's starting to, to look like a ship. Now I'm going to bring in an eighth inch hole punch and I want to punch a little hole through the mast or through both masts there actually and then also through the back of the ship. I need to add my uh, bowsprit to the front so I'm going to glue two layers together and glue that to the top and then two layers together and glue it to the bottom and they both extend off about about three quarters of an inch. But I've got four layers there so it'll be nice and strong. Then I'm going to glue my portholes in place. And I just kind of follow that curve a little bit on both sides. For my fairy, I want her to look like she's floating, so I'm going to use some more of that double stick tape to glue her to an acetate strip. And then I'll use some PVA glue to sandwich the two layers together. For my bunny, I'm going to add a paper tab to extend his legs down a little bit. That way I just have more surface area to glue him to the ship with later. I wanted to dress my characters up a little bit, so I decided to add some shimmer pen to her wings. And for my bunny, I thought a gold hoop earring would be perfect. I just punched a little hole and added a gold jump ring. And then I needed to add that eighth inch hole punch on the, the bow sprit again. And now it's ready to start assembling. I'm going to put the two frame pieces together. And then I can put my struts in place. I've got the uh, the one with a pirate flag in the back. The middle strut is empty. That's on purpose. And then I've got the front sail. And I'll peel off the release paper and lay down the other side. And then I can get the front in place. After the ship's all glued together, I'm going to take some uh, plain baker's twine and I use a little bit of glue on the tip to keep the end from fraying so I can thread it through the holes. I'll secure it to the back with a little bit of double stick tape. It'll get covered up later so I'm not worried about it. For the front I'm going to use some PVA glue and then I'll hold it in place with an acrylic block while it dries. For the back, I decided to cut two more stitched rectangles and then I used a circle to round the top of one. Um, I used some vintage photo ink around the edges to make it sort of match the uh, sails and age it a little bit. I'm going to leave the bottom one blank so I can write my message on the card later and I want to stamp my sentiment on the top piece. I'm just going to line it up in my stamp positioner and then I'll stamp it with some more of that vintage photo ink. Then I can glue these two pieces in place. And we're nearly done with the card.
for my fairy, I'm going to use another piece of the double stick adhesive just on that acetate. I found that nothing really works as well as this, this good red tape on acetate. I can use PVA on the bun and get him in place. And I decided that the bow wasn't staying down as low as I wanted, so I wanted to weigh it down. And I peeled back the string a little bit and I decided to glue a penny in place. I'm going to add another little uh, bowsprit layer to replace the one that I peeled off when I pulled back the string. Then I'm going to cover the penny with a paper circle. And this is just going to add enough weight to pull the string taut when the card is open. So now I'm just going to color in my portholes on both sides. And I decided that the front was a little plain, so to finish off my card, I'm going to add two larger portholes. I think it would be fun if I had a little tiny anchor to add on there too, but I didn't have one in my stash. So after I get it, these two colored in, the card's done. What do you think? I really like the way it turned out. Folds flat to mail. I think my favorite part is his little earring. So cute. Be sure to check out my blog for links to all of the products that I used. If you like today's video, hit subscribe and be sure to click the bell so you don't miss any new videos. Thanks for watching.